Okay, so the next question is from Edward Moldovan in Budapest, Hungary. I said your name right. Um, I'm not sure how the Ember team is into mobile development, but I would like to see some focus there. Rendering speed uh, is one of the important parts and also size, something that might matter. So I think the first thing to say is that several members of the Ember core team work at Yap, and Yap's product is a mobile app. It runs in like PhoneGap or something. Yep on both iOS and Android. Yep. And in fact, uh, Chris and Steph have been, uh, who work at Yap, have been driving a lot of the performance work in yep. Ember itself. So that's, yeah, I would say both Chris and Steph have done more on performance than like I have done yeah, on, yes. in total. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so that's just in terms of the performance work. I think um, HTML bars, which has been landing in phases, and each phase tends to bring improvement, pretty significant improvement. Yeah, I think we've got like two or three X performance improvements out of the right. whole yeah. stack. Yeah, so the so the initial Ember rendering layer was built for a world where IE7 and IE8 were dominant, where even touching the DOM basically killed rendering performance. Um, so HTML bars uses DOM APIs to actually build everything, which tends to be faster on newer browsers. But it's like smart about it's smart about touching only the targeted parts of the right. DOM. So in IE7 and IE8, yeah. rather than touching 10 targeted pieces of DOM, you'd be better off re-rendering a huge Double string thing, of yeah. HTML. But in newer browsers, if you have a big block of DOM, you're better off touching 10 places than re re rebuilding that entire chunk of DOM. Right. So what what else do we have got coming for mobile? So I think uh, one thing is like tree shaking. So yeah. Edward. Uh, mentioned you know file size yeah so ember 2 is a big opportunity for us to pull stuff out of the framework and make them available as add-ons that you can install easily with ember CLI if you need that there's a lot that came with the original version of ember right. that was just trying to be a batteries included framework because right. it was package so management annoying sucked. Yeah, package management sucked yeah so a, a lot of stuff that uh, a lot of utilities like string like formatting, string formatting. A lot of stuff like that we probably wouldn't have included if we had a tool like Ember CLI when we created it, but we just wanted to make it pretty frictionless. As you're saying, batteries included, download the framework, boom, there's everything you need. That constraint has been lifted. Um, and also because everything is using ES6 modules now, I think sometime in the near future we'll be able to do a build for you and say, oh, it looks like you didn't require these modules, let's strip those out of the Ember build for you. Yeah. In fact, Ember internally right now is all ES6 modules, but it gets consumed as a global. But as like one big module, basically. Right, with one big module. But we are in the process, like actually this morning we were working on this before we started filming, of uh, going through and figuring out, okay, how do we make Ember present itself as a bunch of ES6 modules that you can import and use? And the idea then would be that anything you didn't import and wasn't imported by anything you imported, right. uh, we, we could just ignore entirely in the build, right. and that could have really big impact on, perform on file size. Yep. And so I think the, the last thing is once HTML bars lands, I think one thing that we're going to start working on is server-side rendering. So at, initially, at least, um, purely for like Googlebot purposes, but the idea is to get, um, because Ember is so conventional and because we already have this infrastructure in place in, in Node, it should be possible to boot up your Ember app in a Node instance. And when you hit a URL, instead of, instead of look, listening for the listening to the address bar for changes to the URL, we plug it into like an express. Right. And this is actually, I mean, server-side rendering is something we've been thinking about yes. from the beginning. Architecturally, it's been Architecturally, like beginning. and it's just something that we never prioritized the last mile on. Yep. Um, and I think, right, in theory, we could do it right now, but uh, the rendering engine is undergoing such big changes that we may as well wait, wait for, for that to, settle, to yeah. settle before doing. But I, the strategy is pretty simple. It's basically just render the same thing on the server and the client. It's essentially what React yeah. does, right? Render the same thing on the server and the client and then uh, wire up what you did on the client to what you got from the I server. I think it's actually a little bit easier than React, though, because the apps are architected, are architected much more conventionally. Like, there's no way of saying, OK, here's how you well, certainly organize your like, React app. Certainly things like uh, this template is expecting this piece of data right. is something that you that you could simply just run the same code on the server that you were running on the client. Yeah. and you know, hit your API, get it, and then serialize it together with the Something initial else. payload. Yep. Um, and then actually maybe one last thing that's related to this kind of is uh, in terms of reducing payload size engines. So we're hoping, we're hoping that the engines API makes it easier for you to be able to split up your app into these little subsections that eventually engines will lead to 
lazy loading. Yeah. So an example of this would be like discourse. Maybe like the admin section is bigger than like the whole. <laughs> I don't think yeah, so. But think the so. admin section is yeah. a big chunk. Imagine. And so like not having to download the admin section since most users are not actually admins is. Yeah. So they're actually doing some work right now to do that on their own, um, and, and a lot of people have. But having that be sort of baked into Ember CLI, yeah. basically you can just say this engine should be lazy loaded, and then because the routing system is already asynchronous, when you enter a route that isn't loaded yet, you go download the code. Or you can imagine in Skylight, for example, you log in, you see a list of all your endpoints. That's one, that's the main engine or the app. And then only when you click on an endpoint do you link into it, and then it goes and loads it. And I think there's, obvi code. there's obviously some trade-offs about what you want to download where, obviously, when users click around, you don't want to be giving them a big loading spinner for yeah. seconds. But you can, you can once you get that initial payload, then you can start optimistically loading. Yeah. You can decide. It's actually can... what we did at iCloud. Yeah, super cool. Right on.